The Mustard Seed Media video podcast is sponsored and created by Mustard Seed Media Inc., creating and developing media and web for tomorrow's Christian ministries. On the web at mustardseedmedia.com. Okay, so let's open up Drupal.org and let's do a little CMS magic. Okay, so let's start with this Photoshop document here and let's turn this thing into a website. Get right down to it and edit some CSS, shall we? Welcome to yet another Mustard Seed Media video podcast. My name is Bob and I'm your host. This is the podcast where we talk about all things web design. And as you may or may not know, here at Mustard Seed, we are a Drupal shop. We build 100% of our sites using the Drupal content management system. So every other week here on the podcast, we do something Drupal specific. And that is this week. We're going to talk about the new module, Views 2. Uh, many of you may be using Views 1. If you've never used Views at all, we're going to hopefully give you some tips on what it does and why you should use it and stuff like that. But we're going to be very Views 2 specific today because the new interface is really confusing if you're coming from Views two, or coming from views 1. So I'm just going to give you a quick overview of that interface, hopefully give you a couple things just to get you going so you can see how it's working and maybe notice some of the differences between it and Views 1. So let's first ask, what does Views do? Uh, let's look at this uh, this page that we have on our screen right here. This is just uh, my other audio podcast, which I encourage you to go check out, geeksandgod.com. Uh, but let's look at the homepage. On this homepage, this homepage is basically 100% built by something called Views. What Views does is it's a module that allows us to build list of co uh, lists of content on our site, which basically on dynamic websites, that's what you want to do all the time, is build a bunch of different lists. So all of my latest blog entries, all my latest podcast entries, all my latest comments, uh, all that stuff. So if we look at this page, uh, this top section here is a view that basically says, grab the latest podcast, just show one of them, and um, display the teaser that I've, I've defined and put it on the homepage. That's all it does. So then we have another one over here that's just the latest forum topic. So it's our, our view says grab the latest forum topic uh, and put it on the homepage. Uh, grab the whatever this is, 10 latest comments, uh, however many that is. Uh, put it in a section and throw it on the homepage. Grab uh, our five latest podcasts uh, or six latest podcasts and put them on the homepage. Grab all of our recent podcast series and put them on the homepage. So that's what Views does is creates little blocks like this. Uh, this is very helpful. Anybody who builds a lot of Drupal sites uses Views constantly. Uh, in my opinion, and go ahead and uh, everyone yell at me if you're a Drupal guy, uh, Views should be part of Core because everybody uses it. I know there's a bunch of reasons it's not, but we won't get into that. Instead, we'll just go download Views. Uh, Drupal.org slash project slash views. Now you'll notice that views two is only available for Drupal six. Everything for views uh, uh, for Drupal five and before is views one, which is a totally different interface. So we're going to go over views two and you'll see right now it's still a release candidate. So uh, not even official yet, but very close. What we're going to do is just install it like a regular module and then we're going to go onto our modules page and enable both views and the views UI. Uh, you can't create views without enabling the views UI, so make sure you do that. Then the next thing we're going to do is just go to uh, site building views and we're going to get a screen that looks something like this. This is the views overview screen and on this you'll see that these are the views that are built so far. A little description of what they do, uh, what their name is, uh, what types of views they are, all that stuff. So these, this is where all your views show up once you build them. Now, if you're building um, a pretty extensive site, you're going to have lots and lots and lots of views in here. So something new they added that's very nice is the ability to filter all these views by different things. Uh, you can add tags, you can filter by display, by view type, uh, by you know storage. You can filter by all this stuff. You can resort. This is a great thing uh, if you have a lot of views. Uh, you can also import views just like you could in Views 1. Uh, it also has a bunch of new views tools that you can use. Uh, I'm not going to go over those, though, um, at this time. So instead, we're going to add a new view. So let's just go through what it looks like to add a new view in Views 2. We're going to give it a views name. Uh, this has to be a machine-readable name. I'm just going to call it Test View. We're going to put it in a description. We can tag it if we want. This isn't necessary, but this will go, goes back to the original screen that we can just put in a bunch of tags if we want, maybe homepage view or uh, whatever characteristics of the view so we can find them easier later. 
Now, something very powerful and very new in views is uh, views one used to only work on nodes. So we could only really list nodes uh, in Drupal. Instead, now views two is much more powerful and it can list all kinds of things. It can list users, terms, uh, all kinds of different stuff. Uh, if you go back to this Geeks and God example, uh, I sort of lied right at the beginning because I said this was a view. It's actually not. Uh, the reason is because we're using views one and this is uh, taxonomy terms and we were not able to list these with views one. So uh, although it looks like a view and you could build this in views two, it's not actually a view there because views one wouldn't do that. So we're just going to go and we're actually just going to use the node view, which you could use in views one, but you can also build all these different views, which is really awesome. So once you uh, set this up, this information, uh, I'm going to say can't be changed. I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, actually it says right here, cannot be changed. So this is your base information for the view. So if we go to next, uh, this is the new views building screen, much more compact. It's not a big long list like it used to be. And there's a couple things to notice here. One of the most powerful things and most convenient things about views too, is you can build many, many, many views based off of one master view. So this defaults view right here uh, with all these characteristics is your master view. And then what you can do is you can add as many blocks based on that and then change the information, as many pages based on that and change the information. Uh, you also now create feeds this way, all that kind of stuff. So that's a really, really good thing. So views one, you used to only be able to build one page view and one block view. Uh, views two, you can build 10 block views based off of the same default uh, if you want. And that's a really, really good, really powerful thing to be able to build many views based on a master. So when you're setting up this original uh, thing, basically this original section here, when you're setting this up, you're setting up a, a default. Then the idea is when you build additional views, you override the defaults to whatever specific category you want. And uh, then you know you could make that particular view uh, do a particular thing. So let's go ahead and uh, build our default view. Let's do some really basic stuff uh, that we're gonna wanna do. We can, we can tag it. We can change the name. I always leave default as default, so I remember that it's the default. Uh, we can change the title. Style uh, is a new thing. It used to be that if you created a list view or a grid view or a table view, uh, it automatically had those attributes. But now we can do things like create a view of a bunch of fields like you used to do in a list view, but then leave it unformatted. So it doesn't have to be a bulleted list. It doesn't have to be a table. It can just be unformatted and it'll output without any uh, of that additional HTML markup that makes it a list or, or things like that. That's a really cool thing. But if we want to go back to the old list view, we can do that as well. Uh, let's, uh, let's go ahead and do that. We're going to uh, make it a list view. Now, here's a new thing in views that, that might be confusing at first, but there's actually uh, different different types of updating that you're doing to the view. So if we clicked on, uh, as we did, clicked on unformat and we want to change this, we'll choose list and then we'll hit update. We'll choose what type of list it is. So, so while you're operating, you're always operating on a specific item up here and you're operating in a section down here. So we'll choose an unordered list and we'll hit update. Now, something crucial to know at this point, your view did not save when you updated that. You can make multiple changes. So we could go in and we could change it from fields to node. Uh, as a side note, node is uh, teaser or full node, which uh, it used to be. If we want fields, that's equivalent to the old list or uh, grid or something like that. So we can update multiple of these, but it's not saved. If we left right now, our view would not be saved. You have to hit the save button uh, before your view is actually saved. So then um, let's continue down here. We can, uh, you, you know, I'm not going to go through all this stuff, but you can look through it and see what the different options are. Items to display. Uh, this is all, again, building a master view that you're going to base your other views on. This default does not actually build a view that you can use. You have to add an additional block or page or something to this view uh, in order to use it. So let's go over to filters maybe. And once you see, uh, we click that. You'll see we have uh, all our options down here for filters, and they've been nicely grouped by type of filter. So we could choose just node filters. And a filter we would probably want on most views is we want it to be published. So we're going to publish it. Uh, we're going to say yes, we want it published. We're going to update. Once again, it's not saved until we click save. So we're going to click save. So now our master view will show published nodes. Uh, so you can basically go through and set all of this stuff up. Um, I do have to set up a field because uh, with a list type or with a field type, we have to have some kind of field that we're showing. I'm just going to show the node title. 
And then, as always, you can uh, choose whether to link to it or not. We'll link to it. This new thing is really nice, too, is you can label all your fields very easily from here. If you don't want to label, you can just get rid of it. We're going to save our view again. Now, the, the, a good way to speedily move through this is you don't have to save every time as long as you aren't expecting your views interface to crash or something and you lose everything. Okay, so here's our, here's our default view. Right now, we're showing uh, a list of fields, and we're going to show the node title in that list. And we're going to show, uh, we're just going to filter it out to make sure it's published. Right now, it'll show any content type. So let's build a block. Let's say we want to build a block. We'll choose block, and we'll choose add display. Now, you'll notice that we can now go back and forth between these two views, the default view and now the block view. So let's go ahead and we'll add a filter. And we're just going to filter a certain type of content in this. Let's choose node type. And we'll say it's one of event. We'll update. Oops, uh, okay, that's what you don't want to do, what I just did there. I hit update default display. You'll notice if we go back to defaults, uh, we just added that to d the default display. I didn't want to do that. Uh, instead, I want to go back and I want to actually override the default display. So you got to make sure you click override. To me, this is a confusing interface thing in uh, Views 2. I wish it could have been done a little bit better. I don't know how it would have been done better. Uh, but it's very, very easy to screw up and override your default view. Um, so that could be a problem. So I'll override and I'll update. Uh, but now because I did that, actually, if I go back to the default, you'll see it's still there. So I'm actually going to go in now and I'm going to delete this. So I'm going to delete that from my master view. So now you'll see that the node published, or I'm sorry, the node type is gone. But it's still in our block view. So now if we save all this, we've just created a block that will make a list of fields, show 10 of them. And going back to the block, it'll just show events. Now I could create another block based on this. That would be uh, something, maybe it shows just a different type, although everything's going to be formatted the same. You'll see that this makes building blocks much quicker, much easier. So let's say I just want to list all my pages. And again, I almost did it again. I want to override and then update. And then once again, save. So now what I've done is you'll see I've built these two blocks. Now, this could be confusing. Uh, we probably want to name these individual views so we know what they are. So we'll call this event block view, and then we'll name this one page block view. We'll save. Now, something with blocks to know also is you should add um, under block settings admin, you should add a description so it shows up in the blocks menu. Otherwise, you won't uh, be able to see what it is. Now, if we do all this and we save it, we've now just created two new blocks using views two. Let's go into the blocks menu. And we should see those. Here's our event block view. And here's our page block view. So that's views two. Uh, kind of long-winded, but it's very, very complex. I showed you only the very, very, very basics of Views 2. There's so much to it. Go ahead and play around with it. I just wanted to get you uh, familiar with the new interface because uh, it took me a while to figure it out, how exactly it worked. Um, so if you have uh, additional tips on Views 2, go ahead and post them in the comments, mustardseedmedia.com slash podcast, and click on this podcast episode. Uh, and uh, if you have questions on this, go ahead and ask there as well. And share this podcast with people you know. Uh, Twitter it. Uh, put it on your blog. Do whatever. Uh, I'd love to see a bunch of people coming over here and, and adding comments, saying what kind of uh, episode you want us to do, stuff like that. Uh, that's it. Don't forget to check out my audio podcast, geeksandgod.com, as we showed at the beginning. And until next week, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.